Hello class, welcome to week five. So you'll notice that there are two boards due tomorrow. Same thing as we've been doing, one forum is on a chapter, the other is on details. Now I wanted to talk to you briefly about those details. Okay, so the forum that is due on Sunday is something that takes place in the Napoleonic era. Now, some of you are like, uh, what's the Napoleonic era? Now, that's like the early 1800s or the late 1700s. Girls, if you like Jane Austen, now is your opportunity. Um, if any of you like Napoleon, you can write something that takes place in France around that time. Other options could be American options, authors that were really uh, prominent in that time, particularly the early 1800s, include um, Nathaniel Hawthorne, uh, Thoreau, Emerson, Edgar Allan Poe, these are all viable options for you. Um, now keep in mind that this isn't the Revolutionary War era, this is the era that follows that. So um, this is the Romantic era, there's a lot of nature with the sublime. Now for those of you who, you know, it's been a while since you were in an American history class, think about the sublime. The sublime is beauty through pain or beauty through some kind of warlike experience like Napoleon would write about. Um, Jane Austen, you'll realize is very different. Jane Austen wasn't really considered a romantic writer even though she did have romance in her writing. Jane Austen was more considered a satirical writer who wrote about cultural commentary. So you could also take that route if you would like. Um, as always, please keep in mind that I would like you to write a scene that takes place, not necessarily the whole story in 500 words. You'll find that it is very difficult to keep that up. Whereas scenes a little easier. Um, also, uh, you're starting to realize as you're reading through these chapters is that historical fiction is very very closely tied to setting so make sure that you're paying particular attention to setting as you're writing your pieces now this doesn't mean that you need to tell us exactly what everything looks like exactly every moment that your character is in a place but this doesn't mean that you need to give us an idea of what's going on so what are the sights what are the smells what are the sounds what does the scene feel like what is it tastes like. So uh, find ways to give us some sensory details so that we're really anchored in the scene. Um, additionally, you'll notice that as we progress through the semester, we're going further and further back into history. I did that intentionally. It's like I planned it or something. So the way it works is uh, when you're writing something that's contemporary, it's easy to write. There's very few research points that are involved in your plot. Now, in like the postmodern era, a few of you had to research something, a few of you lived it, so you didn't have to research anything. But then we got to the early 1900s, and then none of you ha lived in the early 1900s, so you didn't really have to research anything, but you also didn't have personal experience. Now, uh, we've written the Victorian era. The Victorian era was very unfamiliar to some of you. Um, the, the Napoleonic era is going to be the same. So keep in mind that you will have to be, do more and more research for the scenes that you're interested in. It might be something as simple as how did they do laundry in the early 1800s? Or it might be something a little more complex, such as historical facts and dates. You remember the textbook writer Tom said, his last name is Tom, but he said that um, don't be obsessed with, with historical detail. But it is good to know, you know, some historical facts. So keep that in mind as you're researching. Have some balance. Don't be so obsessed with historical detail that you block yourself as a writer and you spend maybe 18 hours researching one tiny facet. But also don't be so lax on detail that your scene feels more contemporary and less historical. A couple of other things I wanted to address. Um, please read People of the Book or start reading it this week because we are going to start discussing it next week. So if you haven't already, please start reading People of the Book. Uh, when we start discussion, we're going to do we're going to discuss the book in halves. So we're going to talk about the first half of the book, and then the following week we're going to talk about the second half of the book. So please start reading the book. Um, additionally, a few of you um, have contacted me to let me know that you can't make it to the Literary Southwest event, and that's okay. So what I've done is I have put uh, a new document in the Week 5 Weekly tab, in the Week 6 Weekly tab, and under the Assignments tab. So you can get that document in three different places. 
this document will um, walk you through some videos. Now, um, all of you, all of you need to watch the first video. It's eight minutes long. So for those of you who are attending the event, you're going to get a little bit of background regarding this reader. His name is Jimmy Santiago Baca. He wrote a memoir called A Place to Stand, and it's basically the story of a man who um, was in Florence prison, was there illiterate, had no friends, no family, and while he was in prison, he learned to read and write, became a very literate person, and eventually came to the become the poet laureate of Arizona. So it's a very wonderful story. Um, this this uh, video, this eight minute video, will give you a little more context. It will also give you a flavor of who he is as a writer and some of the um, some of the things that he lives and breathes for. So it's a really good video. So all of you need to watch the video. To those of you who will be missing the event, that document has two more videos that you need to watch. So that will replace the reading. Now all of you need to follow steps two through four. That's uh, one during the reading to compile a list of 10 interesting images or phrases that the writer uses. And then uh, steps three and four include what to do with that list. So make sure that you're reading um, both documents regarding the Literary Southwest event, both of them. All of you need to read both documents. Um, what else? Uh, the event itself, if you're attending, is a week from tomorrow. It's on the Prescott campus in the Yavapai College Library. It's in the community room, which is a little glass room that's next to the cafe. Um, I will be there. I would love to see you, so come up and say hi. Um, additionally, um, it would be really good if you maybe prepared some questions for the author. Of course, that's not required. It's optional, but he does do Q&A afterwards, so that would be really cool. And then um, also keep in mind that um, if you're like kind of on the fence about whether to go or not go, I would highly recommend that you go. The whole reason I assigned this assignment is because you can't get everything there is to know about reading and writing just by reading and writing. You need to see an experience from somebody who is a New York Times best-selling author, it's somebody who was a poet laureate, you know, you need to hear his reading and, and hear his writing and then have the opportunity to speak to him afterwards to see what it really is like to be a writer in our time. These are things I can't teach you out of a textbook. These are things that you can't learn out of just making discussion board posts. These are things that you learn from meeting authors. So. I hope to see you all there. Um, if not, then I am looking forward to seeing what you guys think of the videos. Um, yeah, so you have quite a bit of stuff upcoming this week, but you know what? Just take it in stride, budget your time appropriately, and you'll be fine. All right, you guys have a wonderful week.